This is the setup that I'm using to test the Z80 MBC3 board. This is the assembled version. After you have you have mounted all the components on it. And the one thing that I have not shown yet is the bottom side. I have also added a few rubber feet that you can stick on the bottom so that you can put the board on the table without any problems. If there's no feet on them you can of course also just put them on a the plastic bag to isolate it, isolate it from the table. What you will see then after you have plugged in the modules this is the real-time clock. I've also then to add the SD card module and as demonstrated the serial adapter in the other way around. These are all the three you get the cable with it and what we will see now then if I plug it in this is what you will see on the first attempt to power it on. Some LEDs start flashing and the blue LED is constantly flashing now. That means it is uninitialized yet. And I'll switch to the on-screen mode now. The setup is a thin client, an HP one, that has been converted to Windows 7 here on the screen. And I'll switch to the online mode on the screen to show what's happening on the terminal side. This is what is used for the terminal emulation. I have put TTI, PUTTI here in two versions, the plain one and also a pre-configured one with all the settings set. This one is now connected to COM5 and I can load this here manually like this and you will see here the serial line COM5 and it's set to speed 115 kilobaud. And you can see here the detailed settings, the serial port, 8 data bits, 1 stop bit and no parity or flow control. One other thing that I've changed in the default settings is this keyboard uh, setting for the backspace key. Normally this is on the right side, control break, I think, is changed to control H. And if I then open it, we will see the first boot screen and it will look like this. Here you see all the nine options. And the first thing that you will probably want to do is change the time of the real time clock on it. And I'll continue that with the on screen version. I will now start the terminal emulator, PUTTI, with the settings that I've just demonstrated. It will now connect to COM port 4, in this case, and you will see the startup messages from the boot, that it has loaded the iOS for the AT Mega 4809, and some sign-on messages that it has detected the GPIO chip. CPM auto exec is off. Select boot mode or system parameters. And then you will see here one of nine options. You can auto boot, load basic, fourth, or a disk image from the SD card. 
but the first thing that we'll do is to edit the real-time clock settings so I press 9 now and you will see here the date and time and that I can change those by using the top plus and minus keys and the enter key when it's finished first press top change it to the current date and time and you will see that the seconds will run automatically with it once finished you press the enter key and it reloads the boot screen so now we can choose choose one of the operating systems either basic I'll show the basic option and hopefully I can also show now what happens if I say print character string 7 and that's what happens the beeper you just heard that's the beeper on the NBC board now if we boot again and press the reset button then we will get a different menu see it will now automatically load the last selected boot option which is basic so if you want to switch to another operating system then we have to reset the board by first pressing the user key and hold it down so the blue LED will come on and then press the reset button and then you will see it will go back to the boot menu and so now it has remembered that we selected option 2 the previous time and if you want to load for instance CPM now we can choose 4 or option 8 enables you to change the operating system and let's try CPM or QPM 2.7 I select that it still loads the basic now but if I press reset again and now choose load the operating system from the disk it has remembered that we chose QPM select option 4 and now it boots to the disk with QPM I can show the disk contents that's on the SD card and also it will now display the correct date and time that we've just set so that's today 23rd of June just after 1800 hours.